Well, today on the show, we're going to be talking about cancer prevention, uh, things that uh, you, you can do or need to do, especially the older that we get. And we decided to come talk to uh, one of the leading experts on there, Dr. Brian Persing here, uh, singing we're the health system. How are you, sir? Good. Thank you so much for coming. Well, thank you very much for having us. And, uh, you know, cancer is something that affects so many people. I mean, just about every person has either had someone in their family, themselves, or know someone that's been through it. What made you decide to become a, an oncologist? Um, I never wanted to become an oncologist until I did a rotation up in uh, uh, Jackson with the hematology service, dealing mm -hmm. with patients that had leukemia uh, and lymphoma. Mm -hmm. And uh, there was a lot of basic science still involved in, in what we did. And it tied to that scientific side of why so many physicians get into the medical field to begin with. But the part I enjoyed more than that was the rapid development of relationship that we, we can have with patients and how quickly we get to know them and how we become uh, dependent on each other to help get them better. And so uh, originally wanted to be a pediatrician uh, and quickly changed over to this once I had the opportunity to start working with, with cancer patients. Well, even as a, uh, working with cancer, cancer patients, you know, I have in the past done some dealings with, uh, with St. Jude's Children's Hospital. And, you know, that's all about, you know, cancer and everything. Right. So I know still you're going to end up dealing with children from, from time to time. From time to time, we do deal with children. Oftentimes, uh, uh, because of my training being an internal medicine background, uh, we tend to deal with adults only. But there are times we have kids in the community that are involved and we, we help participate in their care and try to make things easier for the family sometimes. Well, let's talk about the importance of screening. Uh, you know, we'll start out with, uh, with women. and. Uh, uh, getting screened for breast cancer, getting their year, yearly mammogram. They usually say, what, about 40, the age of 40, 45 women should start yeah. getting a yearly mammogram. Is it sometimes important to, uh, for them to start earlier than that? It is important to start earlier sometimes. Uh, there's, there's a lot of debate, and the U.S. Preventative Task Force got in some trouble saying they, we should start at 50 uh, a few years ago, and the American Cancer Society recommends age 40, mm -hmm. uh, and, and many other screening entities do as well. Uh, if you have a family, a first degree relative, which typically means a mother or a sister mm -hmm. uh, that has breast cancer, certainly a brother would really increase your risk because that's uncommon in men. Uh, you would need to be screened 10 years earlier than your first degree relative at the age they were diagnosed. So if mom got breast cancer at 45, you should actually start your screening at 35. Yeah, it's an interesting point that you're talking about men. Actually, the first case of breast cancer was actually in a man, from what uh, if I remember my uh, reading about years ago. Um, okay, so let's, let's jump over to men. Okay. Uh, prostate cancer. Right. Um, when is it the, the best time for men, again, to start getting screened for that? Even more controversial. So uh, there's been a lot of literature lately that we're uh, finding prostate cancer early, mm -hmm. but it's not affecting how long men live as a result of being diagnosed with prostate cancer. Uh, there are some high-risk populations. Anybody with a family member is considered a higher-risk population, but also uh, our African-American community, especially here along the coast, mm -hmm. they recommend screening. Uh, the most of the major entities recommend a discussion with your physician regarding the risks and benefits, but typically starting by age 50 mm -hmm. for, for normal risk and for probably African Americans or somebody with a first degree relative, probably starting even at age 40 yeah, for PSA some of those patients. PSA tested is, uh, is very, right. very important. Right. Let's jump to colon cancer. Absolutely. Talk about that. N not exciting. The prep is usually not fun, yeah. but very important, okay? Recommended screening at age 50 for most, for most, uh, for most folks. Mm -hmm. What we find is if it runs in the family, we typically recommend earlier screening. And now with uh, the ability to do genetic testing, we're even finding uh, some populations we try to screen even earlier than, than, than uh, uh, 50 or even 40. Okay. Um, and then typically every 10 years thereafter. Lung cancer. Um, of course, you know, you see a lot of that amongst people that, uh, that are smokers, right? Um, but there are uh, times when there might not be a smoker, right? Lung cancer has just recently kind of gained approval for screening, and there's been a lot of debate about how best to do that. We understand that a population that's been smoking for, uh, uh, you know, or had 30 pack years, so that will be one pack 
a day for 30 years or 15 packs a day or, or two packs a day for 15 years. Hopefully not 15 packs a day. I hope not. That would be a lot of cigarettes. <laughs> a lot of money uh, too. <laughs> a lot of money uh, can be screened. Mm -hmm. Typically starting at age 50 uh, and end at age 75 and smoking within the last uh, 10 to 15 years then. Meaning if you've stopped 40 years ago, there's probably not a need for screening. Well, let's talk about prevention, especially uh, smoking. And I've got to ask this. Are these little electronic cigarettes, are they really a safe uh, alternative to I'm smoking? I'm glad you asked that. Uh, no, they're not. I didn't uh, they're think still, so. They're still nicotine, mm -hmm. uh, and they are still, they're still heated up, uh, even though they're vaporized. And, and that heating element can still cause carcinogens. And so there are studies ongoing right now to figure out where they sit amongst the, the risks. Mm -hmm. We find that uh, anything with nicotine in it, even chewing tobacco we put in our mouth, oh, yes. uh, can cause mouth cancers, head and neck cancers, or bladder cancers. And so we know it's not just the smoke side of it, it's anything with nicotine. Um, obesity That's, and diet, those, right. those kind of go hand in hand. They do go hand in hand. Uh, obesity, one of our largest issues here in, in Mississippi from a health standpoint, not only from we're number one in cancer, that line. we're always number one or number two. We fight with Louisiana and Arkansas a little bit. We like to eat. We do, <laughs> uh, uh, and, and we have good food, that's why. Um, uh, one comment was made, uh, some people uh, eat to live, here we live to eat, and, so, uh, and, and we do. Uh, it's very important uh, to manage obesity, and that can be done not only by diet, appropriate diet, but also important for exercise. Both of those have been shown to reduce. If you reduce your BMI or your body mass index, right. uh, you have a lower risk of cancer. The interesting thing is the Journal of Oncology Practice, which is part of uh, the American Society of Clinical <laughs> Oncology, that was one of their, their top uh, targets for cancer prevention mm -hmm. this April. Uh, real quick now, we've got about a minute left. Uh, any myths that you want to uh, mention? Yes, so I, I just encouraged people to exercise. Deodorant doesn't cause breast cancer, so when you're exercising, wear deodorant, okay? <laughs> so we hear that one not infrequently. Women are afraid to wear deodorant. Um, uh, natural things aren't always better than man-made things, meaning snake venom and, and, and you know a black widow bite are not necessarily, they're natural but not safe. Mm -hmm. and so just because things are natural, it doesn't mean that they take care of, they, they, they prevent cancers, you know? Uh, and uh, uh, there are lots of other myths, but uh, those are some of the main ones. Well, Dr. Persing, thank you so much for your time. Yeah. If you'd like some more information, you can call the number on your screen. And be sure if you have any questions, you know, ask your own physician. Uh, you know, and the old saying, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. Well, it's absolutely true. Cancer is not something that you want to mess around with.